This video is going to show how you can add web encryption to Internet of Things traffic to add security to Maker projects. This is based around a specific example using the Raspberry Pi web projects, but can also be used as a way to secure projects based around a microcontroller such as an ESP32, Arduino or Raspberry Pi Pico RP2040 using a Wi-Fi pack or the Arduino RP2040. The internet, or more specifically the World Wide Web, runs over a networking protocol called Hypertext Transfer Protocol, or HTTP for short. The problem with this is that all the data is passed across the network unencrypted. In my video on Penguin Fortress, see the link in the description, I show just how easy it is to read this information and steal passwords. This image shows the password captured in Wireshark. To address this, we can instead use HTTPS, which adds SSL, or more commonly, TLS encryption and certificate authentication. So instead of sending the information in plain text, which is demonstrated in the first example, the data is encrypted, and that is passed over the network instead. This encrypted data cannot be read by anyone other than the recipient of the data. This ensures that all communications are secure through the encryption. We could enable HTTPS on all our IoT devices. This does have some challenges, both in installing and configuring the network. Most modern IoT devices do now support HTTPS, although some may not. But even if they do, there can be an issue with managing the keys and certificates. An alternative is to use HTTP on the IoT device, but then secure the connection to the internet through a reverse proxy. To explain what a reverse proxy does, I'll show an example. I'm going to talk in terms of a proxy. The key thing about the reverse bit is that it's used for the incoming connection for the server or IoT device, rather than from a client outwards. So here we have a cloud representing the internet and a Raspberry Pi representing our IoT device. And this is the proxy server, which is going in between the Raspberry Pi and the internet. Now what happens when a user connects to the device? As we see in the red arrow, the user, instead of connecting direct to the IoT device, goes to the proxy. The proxy then forwards that request onto the IoT device, shown here with the orange arrow, which replies the proxy, and then the proxy replies the user. What this means is that as far as the user is concerned, they only ever see the proxy. And the same for the IoT device. This is something that can be useful for a variety of different reasons, including load balancing. But the benefits I'm interested in are for security. Also, the ability to have multiple IoT devices, which can share a single internet facing IP address. So first, let's look at the security. The proxy can act as a firewall, restricting the access to the IoT device, but it can also perform the HTTPS encryption for it. If you enable SSL stroke TLS on the proxy, then as far as the client is concerned, the communications are now secured. There are no changes needed on the IoT device to support that. Another thing is that you can now add multiple devices, and these all share the same IP address and port. How does the proxy know which IoT device to communicate with? Well, that can be handled through use of different URL paths, which I'll explain later. Before we move on to the configuration, I'll just explain one disadvantage to this. The main thing with this setup is that the session between the proxy and the IoT device is not encrypted. This means that the network needs to be secured at that point. There are different ways that this can be achieved. It could be through it being a physical network under your control, or through a secure passphrase on your wireless network, or you could actually install the proxy on the IoT device itself. This doesn't have to be two separate devices. For me, I'm happy that my internal network is locked down, and so this does meet my requirement. As I've said, one of the main reasons for setting up the proxy in this way 
so that I can have multiple IoT devices from a single internet address. In this setup, I have a proxy and then I've got two IoT devices. In real life, these are actually all Raspberry Pi computers, but to avoid confusion, I've just shown the proxy as a server rather than as Raspberry Pi. I'll explain this using these examples. The first client to connect goes to the public IP address of the proxy with the path slash rpi1 slash index.php. The proxy receives that, changes that from HTTPS to HTTP, and the IP address to that of the Raspberry Pi 1. It also strips RPI 1 from the path. As you can see, the difference between what the user types and then what gets passed on to the Raspberry Pi. If the client now has RPI2 in the path, then this will go to the Raspberry Pi 2 instead. I also plan to handle a top level index.php, which will add links to each of the Raspberry Pi IoT devices. So effectively, this way I have got three devices on the same internet address. You could have many more if you wanted to. One of the devices I'm going to control using this is my Raspberry Pi Pixel server, controlling RGB LED strips, or sometimes known as NeoPixels. One thing to be aware of is that the IO2 device needs to use relative path names for this to work. That is something I had to change on the code for the Pixel server, as it did use some absolute path names previously. I'm also working on adding authentication to the Pixel server, and I'll be covering that in a future video. So please subscribe and turn on notifications if you're interested in seeing that when that comes out. So I'm going to give a short overview of the configuration steps. This won't be a full step-by-step -step demonstration. I've shown some of this already on my Penguin Fortress channel. See the description for a link on, to the video on configuring Nginx. Essentially, first we need to install Nginx. Then set up the encryption and certificates. I'll be using Let's Encrypt rather than self-signed certificate, which is what I showed in the other video. And then I'll show some of the configuration details for connecting to different hosts. Assuming you're using a Raspberry Pi or other Debian or Ubuntu based computer, then you can now install Nginx using the advanced package tool or apt for short. I suggest you first update the system using sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade. Then to install Nginx, use sudo apt install Nginx. You can now install certbot, which is a tool for configuring encryption and the Let's Encrypt certificate. Again, this can be installed using apt, both for the certbot package and the Python certbot package. That's sudo apt install certbot and sudo apt install python3 hyphen certbot hyphen nginx. I suggest creating your site's configuration at this point, or you could use the default one. The reason is that the certbot tool will then add the appropriate configuration to the file for the encryption. I've created one here with the reverse proxy to the first Raspberry Pi. I'll then add the other entries as required later. This is added to a file in slash etc slash nginx slash sites available. But then I've created a link that goes from the file in sites available to sites enabled. And this is what's actually going to activate it. You can then use certbot to generate the keys. It doesn't need to connect back to the web server running on your proxy to work. So that make sure that Nginx is running and that port 80 is being handled by Nginx and forward through your router if required. You should use the public qualified domain name if possible, which is where I've put public host name in the certbot command. Uh, you may want to use a service such as dynamic DNS service, 
such as DuckDNS. And then you can reload the Nginx service and it should come up as the HTTPS proxy on port 443. So this is shown one of the ways of securing your IoT projects by adding encryption through a reverse proxy. There are other ways that you can add encryption on IoT devices, but this is the one that fitted my needs. Do you use different methods? If so, please leave a comment and let us know the benefits of what you use. Please click on one of these links to visit my other channel, Penguin Fortress, which will provide more information on cybersecurity, some of the tricks that hackers use, and how to keep your computers safe. Thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you on a future video.